Hello, YouTube. Today on The Naughty Librarian, I am doing my next episode of Drunk Classics, and today I am reading Macbeth by William Shakespeare. And I have this really cool edition. It's like, what is this, the complete works of William Shakespeare, and it's got this little photo and stuff, and it's a chonker of a book, but it's got all of the plays, and it's gold, and I'm going to read Macbeth. That's what I'm doing today. I will admit, I have pre-gamed <laughs> this Drunk Classics episode. Basically, Macbeth isn't super long, so I wanted to come in probably already on glass three because like, I'm not gonna have enough time to drink several glasses. And if I did, I'm just gonna be chugging wine, which is not pleasant. So I've pre-gamed it a bit. But anyway, we're reading Macbeth. It's gonna be fun. It's got witches, it's got kilts, it's got ambition, and then like murder. It's got a lot of things that I'm super into, and I feel like alcohol is only going to make it better. <laughs> Today we're having a rosé. I have the Chateau Gigerie Côte de Provence, and I just actually talked about this wine in my latest episode of my wine chats, and it's, um, it's a rosé from Provence in France. So it always has this kind of orangey pink light color. It has like a lot of like white peach and strawberry and some minerality on the nose. And also on the palate, I kind of get the same flavors. So is it a particularly complex wine? No, it's not. But you know what? It's fun. Provence Rosé, it's always a good time. You know, it's a blend. I think this one is uh, particularly Grenache. Cinso and Morvedra, at least according to the importer's website. So it's a nice little blend of, of, of wines. It's a good time wine. <laughs> All right, let's get into Macbeth. Hi, I'm Czech again. So Macbeth, it has five, count of five acts. I figure, you know what? In between each act, I will stop in tell you what's been happening. Okay, so Macbeth, right? Macbeth and the army, they're fighting Vikings. And everyone's like, oh shit, have y'all seen Macbeth? Like he's real good at decapitating motherfuckers. Like he's the best. Like all of the soldiers, have raging boners for Macbeth. They think he's like the coolest guy. And they're like, wow, Macbeth, like, you should be king, bro. Like, you're super cool. Like, I'd vote for you. They don't vote for kings, but you, you get it. And Macbeth's like, oh, you know, but maybe. <laughs> the seed is planted in his head. Like, oh, maybe I should be king. Like, maybe I'm good at it. Look how many heads I took off people today. Like, I'm killing it literally. And then, like, they run into these witches who are straight weirdos. The weirdest people. They're like, this three weird ladies. Like, I feel like they should have, like, 18 cats and, and wear tinfoil hats. They're just the craziest ladies. <laughs> and she, they're like, ooh, Macbeth, like, look at you. You should be king. Like, even they're into Macbeth. Everybody has a raging boner for Macbeth. He's, like, the coolest soldier in town, killing all the bad guys. La, la, la. Everyone likes Macbeth. In fact, everybody likes Macbeth so much, they run into the actual king, this guy Duncan, right? And even Duncan's like, Macbeth, bro, bro. Like, you're so good at this. Like, you're really good. Like, hey, maybe you should be king. Ha 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 ha. Like, joking. But then Macbeth is like, well, if even the king thinks I should be king, then, like, I should be king. The seed has taken root. So now he's got it into his head, like... I should probably be king. Like, I'm good at stuff. And so I think, I don't know, maybe it's vanity. I'm not sure. But anyways, he writes this letter. La, la, la. He writes it to his wife, and his wife gets it, and she reads it, and she's like, Macbeth should be king. You know what? I look amazing in a crown. Like, why am I not queen? Macbeth, you should be king. We're gonna have to, like, murder some people, and I'm in for it. Like, I'm good. I'm gonna cut off my like emotions and like any respect I have for human life and just murder people like I'm down she like took to this like a duck to water she's like oh you should be king like who do I need to kill like, who do I need to do it I'll kill him right now I'll kill him with his like fucking butter knife <laughs> so my best he gets home 
and he's talking to his wife, which she doesn't have a name that I know of. They just call her Lady Macbeth, so I'm just going to have to keep calling her Lady Macbeth unless I come up with a better name for her. But anyway, he gets home and he's like, sup? And she's like, hey, what's up? You should be king. Like, I've got my hair ready for crowns. Like, I'm so into this. And he's like, really? Because I'm kind of into it too. Oh my gosh. Like, this is why we're married. So they kind of have this, like, they're on the same page mentally. Like, I like them. <laughs> and Macbeth, he's like, hey, guess what? The King Duncan, he's coming over to our house tonight. And, she, and Lady Macbeth is like, this is an opportunity. So they start devising murder plans. And you know, like the, the king comes over and they're like having dinner and whatnot. And Macbeth, he starts getting like kind of second thoughts about things. He's like, you know, like, should I murder the king? Because like, he's the fucking king. And he's like a friend. And he's literally at my house right now. Like, I probably shouldn't murder him. Like, at the very least, I'm being a terrible host. <laughs> and Lady Macbeth, she's like, bro, no, 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 no. You're not backing out now. We're like 75% of the way through the plan. You're not going to back out now. Man up, you know, toxic masculinity. She's like, we're going to murder this guy. It's going to be great. I'm going to be queen. You're going to be queen. It's going to be like awesome. And basically she gets really into it, at least like in the, the reading I'm listening to, because it's a dramatic reenactment of the play. Like, Lady Macbeth is way horny for murder. Like, she's, like, way into murder to a point where I'm, like, alarmed. And Macbeth is just like, I like how horny for murder you are. Like, okay, you, you know what? You talk me back into this. We're totally gonna kill the king because he's real excited about how horny for murder she is. <laughs> like, he's just thinking with his dick, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, so, um, they've made a plan to kill the king. And they're gonna do it after he goes to bed. Like, I guess they're gonna poison him or something. I don't know, but like, yeah. She's horny for murder and he's into that and they're gonna go kill the king. Anyway, let's go into act two. <laughs> Finish act two. Refilled my glass. Having a good time. So, let's talk about some shit that has gone down. Okay, so, Macbeth. Kills Duncan. He stabs him. He's totally, he's super dead. He stabs the shit out of him. And, and he, like, immediately feels real bad about it. Like, like, for all the reasons I've previously discussed. One, it makes him a bad host. <laughs> Two, it's the effing king. And he's, like, friends with the guy. And he still just killed him. So he's super dead. He feels bad about it. And Lady Macbeth is like, okay, calm the F down. Did you follow my instruction? Did you conceal the fact that you did this? Did you hide the murder weapon? Have you done literally any of these things? And he's just like, no, I just killed a guy. I'm freaking out. And she's like, oh my gosh, go wash your damn hands and live. I'll take care of everything. Cause apparently I have to do everything around here. Like she's really like just kind of upset about it. So like Macbeth, he goes to wash his hands because he just comes out covered in blood. And she's like, listen, like step one, don't be covered in blood. So anyways, he goes off to wash and she's like, ugh, fine. And she takes the daggers and she goes and plants them on like the king's attendants because she got them real drunk. And they're like, they're, they're passed out. So she's like, I'm going to hide the bloody daggers. She does that. And, and they're good. Come next morning and a bunch of the other like noble guys, they show up. I don't know why they weren't at the party last night, but they show up in the morning and they're like, hey, Macbeth, hey buddy, sorry we missed the party. We're gonna, we're here to get the king. He told us to show up early in the morning. We got shit to do today, so we're gonna go get him. And he's like, yeah, 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 go get him, it's cool. And so they go get him and they're like, oh no, the king has been murdered. Cause they walk in and they find a body. And like Macbeth and Lady Macbeth are just like, oh no, not dead at our house. Oh no, what a tragedy. <laughs> just kind of playing it off. And Macbeth is already trying to cover like his murderous like ways because he kills the guards that were guarding the king so they can't like say shit that, and if they happen to see anything they can't talk so he kills them. And everyone's like, damn Macbeth, why'd you kill them? And he's just like, oh, I was sad and angry because they didn't protect the king so that that's why I killed him. No other reason. <laughs> so Macbeth is just on a murder spree. King Duncan, he's got these two sons, Donalbane and Malcolm, and they're like, hey, listen, bro, 
someone killed our dad likely they're gonna kill us because no one just kills a king for funsies like they kill him so they could like rule and stuff or whatever and since neither of us did it like they're probably gonna kill us too and they're like and 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 they agree on this and they're like all right let's split up we're getting the f out of here so they both take off i think i think malcolm goes to england and donald then goes to ireland and they're just like let's go lay low so no one kills us too However, the fact that they like flee the murder scene makes people suspicious of them. They're like, you know what? His sons, they didn't even stick around. They just took off. I bet they killed him. Like people are suspicious of them now because they took off. However, like at the end of the act, like there's one of the noblemen, Macduff, and he's just like, I don't know about all this. This is, seems to be very fortunate for Macbeth since like the king's dead and his two sons ran off. Well, guess who's king now? Macbeth. He's over getting sworn in right now. Hmm, this seems really convenient for him. Like, Macduff's the only one who's just like, mm hmm I bet. Yeah, the sons did it. Not the guy whose house he was at while he got stabbed and junk. Okay. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where we end it. So Macbeth has killed up to three people now and not like in soldier battles where he's like decapitating like enemy soldiers because that's just a thing Macbeth does. But like in this one, these are just people. Now he's just a murderer and he's up to three. Like he's got a a good body count going here. That's where we are in this. <laughs> Let's continue on with his body count. Okay, so here we are. Act three complete. So act three is where Macbeth loses his damn mind. <laughs> so it starts out, remember Banquo? He's like Mac Macbeth's bestie, right? And he and Macbeth were the ones who met with the, the witches in the beginning of the play. And the witches were told, were like, hey, Macbeth, you should be king and junk. And they gave, like, Banquo his own little prophecy. And they're like, hey, Banquo, you know, your sons, they're going to be kings and stuff. So, you know, they didn't think anything of it. But now that Macbeth is king, Banquo's like, huh. That's a little sus. I don't know about this. So, like, Banquo's having some thoughts. He's like, hey, things are working out real well for Macbeth. Almost as if it was prophesied. So, like, maybe he was in on it. Like, he's starting to have some doubts about, about Macbeth. But anyway, Macbeth, he shows up and he's just like, oh, hey, Banquo, what up, bro? Oh, you heading out? Okay, you bringing your son with you, too? Okay, cool. See you later bring in the murderers. So like Banquo heads out with his son and Macbeth, he hires like a whole bunch of assassins and they're like, hey, go kill Banquo and his son because like his son's supposed to be king and I'm not fucking with that. So he hires like three assassins and, and he sends them after Banquo. And, he, and every day he just gets more and more paranoid and I'm assuming it's because of this prophecy where like they said he's gonna be king but like not for long and then Banquo's children are supposed to be king and he's just like mm -mm, I need to stop this prophecy so like he keeps getting more and more paranoid every day and Macbeth knows he's going crazy too and Macbeth is like oh full of scorpions my mind is you know because he's got a brain full of scorpions he is paranoid AF so you know his mental state is just going downhill but anyway so the, the murderers, they catch up to Banquo and his son, and, and they kill Banquo, but the son gets away. So, like, Macbeth murder count up to four in, like, a half now, because, like, Fleance, so who's Banquo's son, he got away, but, like, Macbeth wanted him murdered, so I'm giving him a half point for that. So, 4.5 murders I'm attributing to Macbeth. <laughs> But anyway, so like they're gonna have this big dinner and they're having all the nobles over and Macbeth, you know, he's being real fun at dinner. He's just like, oh, what a shame that Banquo isn't here. Oh boy, do I miss Banquo. I wish he was here. You know, like he didn't just have it murdered. So he's just like, oh, well, Banquo, I wish he was here. And they're having a nice time at dinner. And then Macbeth loses his damn mind again because he starts seeing Banquo's ghost and he 
just loses his shit. He's like talking to this ghost. He's like, you're covered in blood and you're like trying to trick me. And he's just freaking out because the Banquo ghost is like sitting in his chair and he's just like, uh-uh, uh-uh. And he's having a panic attack, like freaking out. And everyone's like, uh, who is the king talking to? Is he talking to a chair? Like everyone thinks it's weird because he's literally doing it in front of a room full of people. So Lady Macbeth is like, no, 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 no. It it's cool, it's cool. Like he does this sometimes. Don't worry about it. Like give him a minute, he'll chill. Like it's fine. Like <laughs> so that's like her big plan to fix the situation. Just tell everybody to chill. It'll be done in a minute. And so she kind of pulls Macbeth aside and she's like, bro, you need to get your shit together. Like we are at dinner right now. Pull it together! <laughs> and like, he just can't get it together because he keeps seeing this ghost. So Meg Lady Macbeth is like, you know, like, hey, why don't you guys just leave? I think, I think we should call it a night, everybody. Like, and everyone's like, yep, that's a good call, Lady Macbeth. We're not dealing with this shit. And like, everybody leaves. And Lady Macbeth is like, god damn it, Macbeth. <laughs> You have ruined dinner with your mental breakdown. Can you get it together? Like, she is just not having this, and he is just, like, having a full mental breakdown. So, you know, I feel like he might be a bit guilty about all the murder he's done. That's just kind of where we are. We're just seeing Macbeth lose his damn mind. But there's a little button at the end of Act 3 talking about that guy Macduff again. Because Macduff, he was before, he's like, hmm, this is real convenient for... For Macbeth, I wonder if he was involved. And he went to England, so Macduff wasn't at the party either. And he wasn't there because he went to England, you know, where Malcolm is, the son of Duncan, who's probably the rightful heir to the throne. And he went down to England with Malcolm. So, like, I feel like some shit is a brewing there. Because, like, I don't know, there's also rumors that he and Malcolm are, like, becoming good friends and, like, trying to bring people back north with them. Like, an army, perhaps? So, like, things are a brewing in England. And, and I'm, you know, it's not gonna bode well for Macbeth. Because Macbeth is gonna hear about it and he's gonna be like, oh no, I better get my murder gloves on because I got some murdering to do. <laughs> anyway. I got two more acts of this play. Let's go. Four and five. Let's see what murdery shit happens next. <laughs> okay. So I finished act four. And I'll be honest, this was a rough act to get through. Like, I'm still a little emotional about it. Like, oh man, some shit has gone down. Okay, so let's talk. So where we left off, Macbeth... He's losing his damn mind. So he goes over to the witches. And the witches are just hanging out. They're making a stew. They're having a good time. And he's like, witches, you got to show me what's going on because I've lost my shit. And they're like, all right, we'll show you what's going to happen. And so they conjure up like these visions. And so the visions, they like say, hey, you should beware of Macduff. Also, no man who's born of a woman can hurt you. And like only when like the woods of this particular forest come at you will you be defeated and Macbeth is like this is incredible news I have a plan part one kill Macduff <laughs> part two no man bo born of woman can hurt me I'm solid ain't nobody gonna kill me number three if those forests show up on my lawn I'll start to worry but since forests don't walk around I'm good. And four, you know what? Banquo's kids are still destined to be king. So I gotta go find that little shit and kill him. Like, I'm good. I gotta kill some people and I'm fine. Like, he feels a whole lot better about himself. So he goes back home. He's feeling good. And someone's like, hey, Macbeth, guess what? Macduff? Yeah, he's in England with Malcolm. And he's like, that little shit. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go to his castle and I'm gonna murder everybody. So he does that. He goes to the castle. And this is the part where I got like quite emotional because it is a rough scene. So Macbeth, he sends a bunch of assassins to Macduff's castle. Mind you, just his wife, a baby, and like his son are there. The son is probably like 10 years old or something. So it's just like two children and a woman and like servants and he sends like assassins. And there's this whole scene with the mother and the son and the mother is just like, Macduff fucking left, okay? He sucks, he's supposed to be here. Like, does he not think we're gonna get murdered? Cause like, we're totally gonna get murdered. Like she seems to understand the situation quite well. And so she's talking to her son and like trying to 
you know, not let him know that he's going to get murdered because she knows it's got to happen. And then, like, assassins show up and they start talking shit. And the son is, like, trying to protect the mom and they just kill the little boy. Like, just on page, kill this little boy. And then, like, the mother's, like, holding a baby and she's, she's trying to run away because the, the little boy's trying to save his mom and it gets killed. And, the, and you know, she's going to get killed, too. And the baby and all of the servants. And I was like, oh, my gosh, it's a lot to be on page. <laughs> So yeah, that was a really rough scene. I didn't remember it being in there because I haven't really read Macbeth since college. So it's been a little bit of time, but like, oh man, I'm like, oh, it hurt my soul. <laughs> but anyway, cut to Macduff in England with Malcolm and Macduff. He's like, Malcolm, you got to go back to Scotland, homie, because like Macbeth, he sucks. He sucks so bad. You need to go back to Scotland and like reclaim the throne. And Malcolm is like not fully sold on this. He's like, listen, I'm a young guy. And honestly, I'm kind of a big slut. Like I like sleeping around and drinking and doing my thing. Like I don't really want to be king. Like he's like being very honest. And I'm like, you know what? Someone in their young 20s, like I get it. <laughs> You want to drink and party and sleep around. You don't want to be king. So he's like trying to be like, listen, like, I know Macbeth sucks real bad, but like, do you think I'm going to be a better king? Like, I'm an idiot. Have you met me? <laughs> so even Malcolm's like, I don't think you're hitching your cart to the right horse, homie. <laughs> and Macduff is still like, no, no, no. Like, Malcolm, Malcolm, it's fine. It's fine. We'll find people to fuck you. Like, you can still be king. Like, it's going to be okay. And then this guy, Ross, he shows up and he's like um, Macduff's cousin. And he just came from his castle, you know, where everyone just got murdered. And he tells Macduff what happened. He's like, yeah, Macbeth had your wife, your baby, your son, all your servants, literally anybody they could find on your property murdered. And Macduff is like, oh no, like he is not having it. But he, and then Malcolm hears it too, because Malcolm's there. And Malcolm's like, oh shit, like he's murdering babies? Like, okay, okay, you know what? Let's get an army, I'll go be king. Like I can't like let him murder babies. Like I have some morals here, I will put away my dick and be king. <laughs> so now there seems to be a plan Malcolm and Macduff are gonna get an army and like take over Scotland from Macbeth because Macbeth sucks and it just took like murdering babies to get Malcolm to want to be king apparently so yeah oh boy like act four it like hurt <laughs> the scene the little boy it's like oh my gosh just just stabbed the shit on the page oh whew. <sighs> all right last act Let's go. I have finished Macbeth. <laughs> so, all right, let's go over act five, the big climactic chapter. So we start off Lady Macbeth. She is now losing her shit too. Like we already knew Macbeth was losing her shit, but now Lady Macbeth is losing her shit. Like she has developed like a habit of sleepwalking and saying crazy stuff. She keeps trying to wash her hands, wash the blood from her hands. You know, the famous light out damn spot. Like she's trying to get the blood off her hands and she's just like admitting to all these murders in her sleep. And everyone's like, oh, like maybe she shouldn't be sleepwalking and admitting to murders. <laughs> and, and you know, things aren't looking good for the Macbeths because it seems like a lot of the other nobles are joining up with Malcolm and Macduff because they all like know what happened to Macduff's family. Like it's not a secret. Everyone knows Macbeth killed them all and they're like, oh, not cool, bro. You're gonna kill our families probably. If you're okay with killing babies there, you're gonna kill all the babies. Like we're gonna go hang out with Malcolm and Macduff. Like they seem like a better bet. <laughs> but is Macbeth worried? No, he is not because he has that prophecy from the witches. And it's basically, there's, there's two key factors here. Here. Like, one, when this particular forest comes to his castle, or no man born of woman can hurt him, essentially. So he's just like, hey, I don't see a forest on my doorstep, and all dudes are born from ladies, so like, I'm good. Put my armor on, we'll fight. Like, he's like, fine with this. However, 
cut back to the army that's coming for Macbeth with Malcolm. They stop at that forest at the, from the prophecy and Malcolm's like, hey, I got an idea. Have all the soldiers cut down like a limb or a sapling or something and we'll kind of put it in our, our rank so it looks like there's more of us. I, I got this. So now they're literally cutting down the forest and bringing it with them to the castle. So uh-oh, prophecy coming to true because now the forest is literally coming to them. Macbeth is just like, oh no, 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 no. Like, that is not good. There's a forest coming, ah shit. But it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I still got that other part of the prophecy because no man born of a woman can hurt me, so like, I'm all right. And then the doctor's like, so like, sorry to make your day worse, but Lady Macbeth is totally dead. Like she killed herself, like a lot. She super killed herself, she's dead now. And he's just like, what a Tuesday, am I right? <laughs> Big battle commences. So all of, Macbeth's forces versus Malcolm and Macduff and a bunch of the English army they brought. They're all fighting and killing and la la la, battle, battle, battle. But still, you know, Macbeth is going around killing people and he's like fine with it. He's just like, yeah, you're bored of a woman? You ain't gonna hurt me. Like he's having a ball. He's very much in his own delusion. He's feeling his own fantasy. And finally, Macbeth and Macduff they meet up on the battlefield and he's just like suck it back duff no man born of a woman can hurt me like he's really like clinging to this part of the prophecy and Macduff's like oh really because i was born by c-section homie like i wasn't born of a woman i got ripped out of the womb and then beth is like oh shit <laughs> So Macduff obviously is the one person who can hurt Macbeth and has reason to because, you know, Macbeth murdered his family like an asshole. And then they fight and stuff and, and of course, you know, Macduff wins the fight. We don't see it happen, but we see the outcome of it because Macduff, he comes back to Malcolm and he's like, hey Malcolm, got a gift for you. It's Macbeth's head. Like he's literally he's carrying around Macbeth's head carrying it around like it's a fucking purse so he's walking around he's like hey Malcolm guess what Macbeth's head you're king now and Malcolm is like honestly it's like wow like I'm not cool with murder this is a lot and I feel bad about it but like I guess I'm king now so like hurrah and he kind of gives like a little speech and everyone's like yay Malcolm so they're all happy that Malcolm's king now because Macbeth sucked and he and he doesn't have a head anymore so he can't be king <laughs> and that's just kind of where it ends it just ends there's no like um the big coronation or like what happens to Scotland afterward it just ends on the battlefield because Macbeth is dead nothing more to do and Malcolm's king now I guess mm. okay so on that note, I have finished my wine, <laughs> and I have finished my bath. Killing it. Okay, so overall, did I enjoy my bath? Yeah, you know, like I, I think it's much more of a visual thing. Like I feel like seeing it live and getting to see all the fights and uh, having actors emote it might be more fun than just listening to it. Although the one I listened to was like a full cast dramatization so like it's actors acting it out it's like it's like a radio play you know what i mean so like i had a good time with it i found a really good like adaptation for like my audio to read along with and i i enjoyed myself is it good yes but i feel like it depends a lot on the visuals of it because i feel like if i was watching this i would had more fun but you know it has a lot of those lines that are very famous from shakespeare in it it's got a ton of murder. It's got kilts. They don't talk about the kilts, but like they're wearing kilts and I love a good kilt. Macbeth, he's a murdery guy and he murders the king. He murders his best friend. He tried to murder his best friend's son. And, and, and then he murders a couple of guards. And then I gotta get another hand. He murders Macduff's wife and his kid and his baby. And then like all of the servants. So like his murder account I don't even have an exact number for because he's like, 
either by himself with his own hands or ordered the murder of a lot of people. Like, he just started killing people. Like, he's got the taste for murder all of a sudden. So yeah, I guess uh, moral of the story is don't murder people because it'll make you crazy and make you murder more. So there you go. Macbeth. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. Um, are you a Macbeth fan? And if so, uh, what do you like about it? Or hey, what is your favorite Shakespearean play? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.